Today we're taking a look at Skur Ritual, which is basically a Call of Duty Zombies inspired game, meaning that it's a round based zombie game. It was developed by Wales Interactive, which from my understanding their only other games before this one were just horror games and they decided to go with a round based zombies game and it's actually really good. I wanted to make a video on it because I feel like a lot of people haven't heard about this game or haven't played it and honestly it's really worth giving a shot especially if you're a fan of Call of Duty Zombies so I thought I would make a little video here showcasing the game to you guys as I think it's really good and a lot more people who enjoy zombies should definitely uh, give it a shot. As you can see spawning in here we actually have a proper fucking zombie HUD uh, you know, compared to uh, Black Ops 6 coming out here. We actually got insta-kill right away. Uh, okay, so that's a life token. It's a self-revive. I think you do have a max capacity of three throughout the whole match. Now, the cool thing is we have these miracles, and uh, I guess these work kind of like games like Vampire Sur Survivors or whatever. You can choose, like, different... Uh, abilities here. I'm gonna go with uh, Electric Elixir, which makes it that whenever I use my healing elixir, which, which all the abilities are on cooldown, but whenever I use it, it's gonna have an electric aura around me, kind of like Electric Cherry, but for my healing bottle thing. Hey, we actually have a pistol that kills stuff, which is also nice. Also, the knife is pretty good. Still one shots on round two. Yeah, that's a double point. That's actually a triple point. This game went crazy. They were like double points. Yeah, fuck that shit. We're going triple points on this bitch. So we're going to wait for the round to start here. We're going to pick that up. There we go. Triple points. Let's get some more points. And then we'll move out of the spawn room here. Actually, let's try the small tub. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Now let's... Uh, that's actually double tap. We'll come back for this. We'll open this door here. We've got another miracle. We'll go with lightning storm, which is really good. It's basically your uh, your specialist ability of this game. And this game looks really creepy. You can tell these guys were doing horror games before this one. It really adds to the aura of the map, as the cool kids say now. <laughs> I'm gonna have a Black Ops 6 video coming out soon, talking a little bit about my thoughts uh, on the game. If you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe. Honestly, I'd rather play this game than Black Ops 6. I'm just gonna put it this way. Oof. One mile tough here, another insta kill. Give me that knife. All right, cool. I will say this game is not perfect. Oh, what the fuck? We already have a boss, I don't even have a weapon. It's not perfect for sure. Let's get Jug here. But it, it does it does really well for itself considering it's a small studio who did it. It's actually really impressive. Sure the gameplay is not like crisp as crisp as Call of Duty or whatever, it's not smooth, but honestly I don't know, I don't mind it that much. It, it feels on par. I mean, it's playable. It's not like it's annoying to play or anything. It's smooth enough, really. So now we're gonna finish this here, and we actually have objectives. You can see top left of the screen here. I can't break this. What the? I'm gonna open this door, because I'm gonna die. I wasn't able to break that for some reason. Um, I don't have bullets. I'm gonna... I'm gonna open this and get a gun. What we got here? Uh, pistol, revolver, I guess we'll get this. Oh, M14, perfect. Okay, I have to kill this guy. Oh yeah, we have insta-kill too. I'm not sure if that actually does more damage to him because of insta-kill, I think so. There we go. And uh, solid shot increases weapon damage. Yeah, let's get that. Always good, have more damage. Okay, let's break this machine here and complete the objective. There we go. And you see, uh, th that's something that I think this game does really well, is it, it does kind of tell you what to do to a certain extent, kind of similar to World War II zombies, where uh, it will guide you through to pack a punch and through the map to give you a little bit of an idea what you should be doing so that when you've played for the first time, you're not completely lost for new players and everything. And I think that's something that Modern Zombies and Call of Duty doesn't do very well, you know, especially Cold War with its pack a punch quests, which are just ridiculously easy. And from what we've seen here with uh, Liberty Balls recently with Black Ops 6, 
it seems like uh, pack a punch is once again gonna be quite easy to do. Now this game, I'm not saying it's hard. Like I'm just gonna open this door here. I'm pretty sure I can pack a punch already, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, I do. So basically, the game just tells you, hey, you have to break these four machines. Basically teaching you, like, hey, there's there's like some Easter egg stuff in this game. And when you actually reach back a bunch, it, it allows you to use it, but then it also gives you a new objective. And it's like, hey, did you like doing that little Easter eggy thingy before? Well, then keep going and try to do that. So it just tells you to get a cylinder. You get here. Oh, gonna press E on here. Stand in the area to open this, the furnace. Okay, let's do that. So yeah, it does guide you through. And there is a, uh, a, a main quest, and there's also like a, a, a secret one, similar to World War II Zombies, uh, what was it called? The Final Reich, you had like the main quest, which was guided, and then you had the hardcore uh, version. Then figure out yourself without any guidance. That's basically what this game does. And it's not like the easter eggs are actually hard, like... All the, I'm pretty sure, yeah, actually, all the super easter eggs, the hardcore easter eggs, I've actually figured out with my friends just playing the game. Uh, I haven't looked up anything online for these easter eggs, which I think is actually a good thing. Like, when you have to go online and look up easter egg steps, it just slows down the pace of the game so much. I, I don't really like watching uh, Mr. Ruff Waffles the, the, throughout my whole easter egg. It's not like... I love his videos, don't get me wrong, I love you, Milo, but... I mean, I'm trying to play zombies here. I'm not trying to to study uh, university class. That's what I like about this game too, is the Easter eggs, they're not like super obvious. They're not super hard either. They're just, there's a good middle ground here that I hope Black Ops 6 will reach, but I doubt if I'm being honest. There, I need this guy to shoot at me so that his fireball hits this thing. It missed, I'm just gonna, there we go. Oh, wait, I hear footsteps. Where is he? Is that the big guy? I think the big guy's coming back. Or maybe not. Maybe I'm just crazy. Oh, these are my footsteps. Oh my god, they're so loud. Holy shit. <laughs> okay, never mind. I thought it was a boss coming. That was just me walking. I guess I'm, I'm, I'm fucking... I'm chubby as fuck or something. I don't know. Oh, look at that. This is a half price. So it's kind of like a fire sale, but it actually allows you to buy everything on the map half price. So I'm actually gonna grab this perk here. Don't even know what it is. Don't care. Get up and go. That's a new perk. I actually haven't seen that before. What the fuck is that? Uh, we're gonna grab this, which is stamina up. And I'm gonna upgrade because why not? It's half price. That's actually, I think it's a really cool power up mechanic. It's one of my favorites in this game. It does make it so sometimes you kind of just rack up points and are waiting on a randomly generated uh, half price to spawn in to pack a punch, for example, because uh, there's different tiers of pack a punch, so you could, uh, you know, be at the point where your pack a punch tier 4 is like 75,000. But if you wait for a half price, then, you know, it's like uh, 37,000 or whatever. So definitely want to wait for these half price to pop before you spend your points. Dude, I'm destroying this guy with this Pack-a-Punch M14 right here. Okay, round 10, finish this up real quick. There we go. And now I have to collect uh, gods, I guess. I'm just gonna kill some zombies here and they should spawn in. I actually love the electric grenade upgrade. It's so good. It stuns all the zombies. Cause I mean, the Molotov after some point, when you're high it enough in rounds, it's gonna stop doing enough damage to kill, right? So having the electric Molotov is really good because it stuns all the zombies. It's like a stun grenade, but it also does a lot of damage. So it's, I don't know, I like it a lot. I'm actually gonna hit the box here, see what we get. Now the cool thing about the box is you can actually get like pack a punch guns in here if you're lucky. Oh, well, they're not pack a punch, they're like tiers. You see like that shotgun, it's tier one, which means it's pack a punch once basically uh if you're lucky and i'm pretty sure this happened to me before but you can get like a tier three weapon at round five it's really rare like it, it's only happened once to me but i know it's possible you can get like really high tier levels guns at very early rounds if you just hit the box but yeah it's really cool because then it's like well you don't have to just rack up a bunch of points for uh, pack a punch, you can actually try your chance at the box and uh, see if you get a, a good tier weapon to compensate for all the points you've spent in the box. 
which, I don't know, I think it's cool. That's one thing I don't like about modern zombies, whether it be Cold War or the upcoming Black Ops 6, which seems to be using the same mechanic, is the weapon rarities. They're not synced with Pack-a-Punch. You have rarities for your weapons, and then you have Pack-a-Punch on top of it, which is a bit dumb in my opinion. But yeah, I don't know, it, it's... It's cool that uh, the Pack-a-Punch and the tiers are like the same because again, it makes the box, the mystery box, it's not actually useless. Like in Cold War, the mystery box after round five, it's basically useless because yeah, sure, you can get like a blue tier weapon, but it's not Pack-a-Punched, so. And then it's like 50,000 points to get your gun to a, a decent Pack-a-Punch rank. So it's just, I don't know. I like this game where if I'm around round 30 and I want to switch weapons for whatever reason, or if I die in co-op and I don't have any guns, I can just spin the box and hopefully get like a tier three or four weapon and then I only have to pack a bunch ones to get it back to five. So now we actually have an easter egg step here, which we have to figure out using this lantern. So as we can see here, number four, is the medusa icon so we're gonna put this here and we're gonna walk back to these uh other paintings so two is also medusa uh one as well what the fuck <laughs> and w they're all medusa what the i've never seen that before they're all the same symbol what the fuck okay well that was quite an easy uh thing to figure out okay <laughs> interesting so we're gonna turn all these to the correct icons and or symbols stop attacking me and we're gonna grab this that's another cool thing look how slow that zombie is that's the last zombie of the round and i can easily dodge his attacks which is really good for easter eggs i can actually walk around and figure out shit and i don't have like a sprinting zombie just slapping my ass the whole time it's it's really good all right so we're gonna do this we actually have to buy this uh weapon i believe Oh wait, no, I have to kill these guys first. Whoa. Special enemy that teleports. And I have to purchase this Wonder Waff. Totally not the Wonder Waff. And I'm actually in a cornfield right now or whatever. I can't see shit. Not a cornfield, but a wheat field, I guess. Whatever, it's a field with grass in it. That's all, okay. Alright, so that's done. We have epic music playing. Yeah. And destroy these. I actually have to... Yeah. Just shoot it with this. And you can actually pack a punch this gun too. It's not that great. Honestly, that's probably my biggest gripe with this map is the Wonder Weapon is very underwhelming. Like, this is not a good gun by any means. I mean, I've never, like, pack a punched it fully, but I don't feel like it's worth doing, especially with the ML capacity that it has. I just, I just don't see it being a viable weapon for high rounds. But maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. And activate, find and destroy the statues. So these are the statues. Let's see if I can remember. Yeah, so I have to look at this symbol. So two wolf heads, and now we go to the statue and I have to turn it so that it is facing got the correct symbol but i actually think i have to destroy it first yeah when it's glowing orange here there i break it and only one more all right so now we can actually do this so these puzzles actually look pretty complicated on the surface but once you figure the puzzle out it, it's really that it's really simple it's actually really not that bad which I think is good that it looks a bit overwhelming at first, but then you, you figure it out and you're like, oh, that's actually not so bad. And you actually kind of feel intelligent for figuring it out. And now we have to escort that lamb. Gonna, we just have to sit next to it while it moves. And right now I only have one zombie left on the map. So we're, we should have time to complete this before the zombie dies. Because yes, the zombies, once it's the last zombie, he's eventually gonna die. I think it's a five minute timer or something where eventually he dies kind of like a crawler in uh, cod zombies but again he's not very dangerous by himself when you're hunting for the hardcore easter egg for example you have a full five minutes to try to figure things out before the next round starts where zombies are just not attacking you which i think is a good compromise where it's like okay you don't have a zombie slapping your ass but you can't just keep that zombie for one hour straight eventually he will die and you will have to complete another round to try again and figure things out and uh oh yeah actually have to kill zombies here i'm running out of ammo but there are ammo boxes 
like uh, Cold War, it's actually very expensive. The more you buy, the more expensive it gets, and it gets really bad after a while. You kind of need half prices to even buy ammo. So yeah, it's not my favorite mechanic. I'm not a big fan of ammo boxes and zombies, but whatever, it, it works. It, it's better than Cold War, I'll say that much. Yeah, and we have a boss. All right, give me bullets. <laughs> oh, yeah, I need to pack a punch. My damage is not great against him. I mean, I'm killing him. It's not so bad, but it's starting to decline. You can tell. Like, by round 20, I'm definitely gonna need a tier 2 weapon at least. Oh, man. This is getting kind of crazy. Infinite ammo. Oh, I'm gonna down. Oh, God. Almost done here. Drink. 97. Oh, triple points. Okay, we're done. That was the last cylinder. Oh shit, we have a trial, so I guess a bit similar to Exozombies if you've played that. Every once in a while during rounds you're gonna have like objectives that if you don't complete it's gonna give you a, uh, a debuff. Which... Uh, this one is an elite maker, which means if I don't break this machine it's actually gonna spawn in a, a really hard boss to kill. Oh my god, get me out of here. Oh, safeguard. Yeah, grab that. Basically invincible now. I still take damage, just really not a lot. That's a really cool power-up too. It's kind of like armor, but as a power-up, which I think is a lot, a, a lot of a better system than uh, the actual armor system in Cold War. Yeah, let's let's hit the box and see if we can get a tier 2 or a tier 3 weapon real quick. PPSH, tier 0, okay then. Oh, it still slaps. I mean, it is a PPSH after all. And I have double tap on it. Look how fast this boy shoots. Yeah, also the box is a dog, by the way. <laughs> There's a whole lore reason behind it. Oh, come on, give me something. Tier zero? You're kidding me. Dude, this box just trolled the fuck out of me. I just, I don't want to keep this M14, to be honest. Oh, no. I could just pack a bunch Power of PPSH. I mean, I'm gonna wait for a half price and do that. Gotta kill zombies while I'm standing in that circle and it's gonna move. Very similar to World War II Zombies. This game does remind me of World War II Zombies a lot in, you know, atmosphere and quest design, but in terms of gameplay, it's, it's a bit more similar to, like, Black Ops 4, I would say. I don't know, maybe I'm talking out of my ass, but it, 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 the gameplay feels more like Black Ops 4. It's not like you can slide cancel a whole lot, like EO3. It's also not as smooth as Cold War, so I don't know. It feels very similar to 4, in my opinion. Healings tab, I mean, yeah. And it's epic, too. I got an, like, from one miracle, I actually got an epic tier melee, which is pretty sick. Like, sometimes the game will just give you, like, the choices, like, hey, do you want a worst ability, but it's epic tier, and it only costs one miracle? Or do you want a good ability that is not, you know, just common tier that you will have to level up four times before it's actually good, but it's better than the other one that you can get cheaper you know so th there's a bit of decision making here it's pretty cool like the, it makes every match different because you don't have to use the same abilities every match okay so we actually have a half price so I'm just, I'm just gonna dip out of this objective here and go pack a punch this ppsh all right good wait for the animation come on tier two okay Nice. Always loved the PPSH, and it feels really good in this game, too. It has a decent amount of bullets, too, which is surprising. Now we keep going with this objective. Almost round 20 now. Another cool thing about this game is they have a roadmap, and so far we've had one free map release on top of the four original maps from the launch of the game. And the maps are free, at least the first two DLC maps we're getting are completely free, which is really nice. Another miracle. Auto revive. Lethal attacks have a chance to restore health. Yes, please. That sounds amazing. Oh, hello. Oh yeah, this gun is garbage now. What the fuck? Where did he go? Never seen that. He just disappeared. That was weird. Destroy the power coils. Oh yeah. Oh boy. 
It's getting kind of crazy. Round 20, kind of crazy. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna need to pack a punch this gun again. It's already falling off. All right, insta kill. Yes, please. And that's all of them done. Now, I believe we can actually go to the boss fight. But I do want to upgrade this once more before I do. How much does it cost now? 30,000. Okay, I'm going to have to wait here for a half price to pop. Upgrade the PPSH to tier 3, which should be plenty enough to kill the boss of the main quest here. The hardcore easter egg boss actually is stronger, and he has a bit of a different patterns and everything. It's the same boss, just stronger with different abilities. Alright, come on. We need a half price to spawn on here you have like these zombies with different abilities like this one teleports as you can see there this one just teleported behind me yeah there's definitely like some mini boss zombies and stuff like that each map has different types of enemies which i think really adds to each map being different from one another it's not like Cold War, where all the four maps are basically the same with different layouts. You play exactly the same in every map. Like this game, each map plays completely different. Although, I'll say similar, you know, different. Like old zombies did, which is really appreciated. Okay, we're almost at 30,000. We didn't get a half price, but that's okay. Now it's kind of like max ammo and zombies. If uh, if I pack punch my gun now for 30,000, you bet your ass I'm gonna get a half price right as the round starts here. Okay, so we have our tier three gun. We're gonna head into the boss fight now. You did it. There he is. And he actually doesn't attack until I attack him. I can actually walk back outside. Oh, never mind. I can't. Okay. I guess I'm stuck here. We actually have to be careful because, yep, he does this. Just grapples you to him. And also the floor becomes lava. So we got to be careful about that where we're standing. And we have to be looking up at this head to do optimal damage. But then you have to be looking at the floor to see where you can actually stand while you're shooting at him. I don't know, it's an interesting boss mechanic. I actually like this boss a lot. And his hardcore version is even better. That's actually really easy with a tier 3 weapon. I guess I could have killed him with a tier 2. And there we go, he's dead. Yeah, that was actually pretty easy. You can complete the first main quest and it's actually pretty easy. And then you can extract. Once you've done that, you've killed the first boss, you can actually extract. Or you can keep going and do the hardcore easter egg. Kill the boss again. And then you actually unlock a medallion. And if you get the medallion of each map, kind of like a super easter egg, then you can actually unlock eventually when you have all four this gun here there we go so i actually get this wonder weapon here now of course i have to get it to higher tiers for it to really be amazing but even though it's round 23 it's still doing quite a bit of damage here I think it's a really cool easter egg reward for doing like all the easter eggs of every map. The hardcore ones, that is. It actually gives you this gun, which I think it's a really cool reward, honestly. And now we can just train, rack up some rounds, all that good stuff. There's actually a progression system in the game, uh, which works pretty similarly to the ether crystals from Cold War. And the higher rounds you go, the higher crystal tiers you get. So it's definitely worth it to do uh, some high rounds in this game. Oh yeah, this wonder weapon is so good. It's only tier 1. Like, imagine if I kept all my points and I only I bought it to like tier 5 or whatever. Like, I'm not actually sure until what rounds the wonder weapon is still one-shotting but i mean if this is tier one and it's around 24 i'm guessing it's probably good at least up until the 60s or something all right round 25 so we're actually gonna extract here i think i've showed pretty decent showcase of the map here gives you a little bit of an idea of what this game's all about but yeah that was the cursed lands of lavernock on Skur ritual and now we'll have gained some xp to level up some stuff yeah there's a uh, actually uh, quite a bit of progression in this game you have all the levels the perk upgrades which are basically like cold wars where 
you spend the crystals and it upgrades your perks. You have some cosmetics. You have over, well, you have 90 masks you can choose from, which you all unlock with progression, except maybe 10 or so that are actually DLC, like these masks here. But all the maps are free, at least for now. So that's really cool. You can actually choose the background of uh, your main menu which you unlock, again, just by playing the game. Depending on each Easter egg you've done, uh, you will unlock, you know, different... Like, I think this one is for completing the first map's Easter egg. So, you know, it's pretty cool. And you can also set it to random, which I like to use. You can choose the menu music also, which I really like this one here. But I could also put it to random or, you know, I could choose my favorite here. You have the Skur Pass, which is basically a battle pass, which you can level up and earn cosmetics and whatnot. And it's completely free. You cannot buy these. It's just, it's basically the progression of the game. For example, if I activate this pass, I would have to get level 50 rank to complete it. So the XP is completely tied to the pass, kind of like Halo Infinite, and you actually choose which rewards you want to get. Like I could I could have started with just this one here, for example, at level 1. I just I really like this game. I wish more people were playing it. Uh, honestly, if you like COD Zombies, give it a try. It goes on sale pretty often. It's really fun. Definitely worth your time. You'll get your money's worth out of it. But yeah, that's gonna be it for me, guys. Hope you enjoyed this little showcase. And let me know if you try out the game. Let me know what you think about it. I'd love to hear people's opinion on the game. Especially if you're a Call of Duty Zombie fan. I'd love to hear what you have to say about the game. But yeah, that's gonna be it for me. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Also, quickly before I end the video, I wanna thank you guys for watching my Call of Duty is not safe video, which is now sitting at all over 200,000 views, which is absolutely crazy. I was not expecting that video to get so much attention, so much people to learn about these issues on the old Call of Duty games. If you don't know, the games are not safe to play on PC, and I would strongly recommend that you at least watch the few first minutes of this video to give you a little bit of an idea of the risks you're putting yourself into by playing the game. But yeah, I want to thank you guys for supporting the channel so much after this video. I've received so so many kind comments of people thanking me for spreading awareness or people sharing more information about the issues that I haven't covered in the video because again I'm not like a cyber security specialist I don't know most of these things as much as other people do but I did want to spread awareness about these issues and I'm glad that it has reached an audience that can now be more informed about these games so I'm really happy that the video turned out the way it did and I'm very grateful that you guys decided to stick around and subscribe to the channel. I've reached now uh, over a thousand subscribers on YouTube, which is great. I want to give a big thank you to you guys who decided to support the channel and stick around and watch my other content, which really means a lot to me. Also, I was now able to get monetized on YouTube and I do want to say that I'm probably not going to monetize most of my videos simply because ads are annoying and YouTube is not my job. It is nice to be able to get a little bit of a revenue from videos. So I've monetized the Call of Duty is not safe video because, well, obviously it's getting a lot of views. So it makes sense to monetize this one. But smaller videos that don't take as much effort for me to do, like these gameplays here that I do, I'm definitely not going to put ads on these. I've also activated channel memberships on my channel. I know that most people don't care about that feature, but I still thought I would put it there for those who want it. I don't expect anyone to use it especially not a channel my size i figured why not i've put my emotes and badges that i use for my twitch channel i've put them on youtube now so if you want to have a little badge on your comments on on my channel you can use my emotes and whatnot anyone's video i believe it's across all of youtube uh, so if you want to support me further i've put it at five dollar canadian so feel free to check it out if you're interested it's not something where i'm going to be posting like exclusive 
types of videos or anything on it like you're not getting like a lot of perks from purchasing it it's really just to support me and the channel if you feel like it and you get a few emotes and some cool badges for doing so so please do not feel obligated to do that it's just there because i figured why not but yeah i'm really grateful for the opportunity to have my youtube channel grow as much as it has and actually get a little bit of pocket money on the side from it as well i've been doing youtube since like 2013 so for me to actually like have a video explode like this is basically a dream come true and i don't expect all my videos to get near as many views as this even so having a few hundred views on each video is definitely something it's a lot more motivating than posting something and only getting like 20 to 50 views which is definitely demoralizing and it's really hard out there for small channels such as myself and i think anyone who's watching who does youtube as well or has tried to do youtube in the past as well knows the struggle i'm happy to have a video who has actually pierced uh through that wall and has actually managed to get a decent amount of views and i'm really happy about that and again i want to thank you guys so much for supporting it i'm glad that the video helped people and i'm glad that people enjoyed it i'm hoping to continue making great content in the future and i hope you guys will be there to follow me along on this journey thank you guys so much next up like i said i have a black ops 6 video planned and also i'm gonna be doing a video on the upcoming dead rising deluxe remaster when it comes out so i hope you guys are interested for that if not that's okay i know that most of my content is Call of Duty right now. I'm not like a Call of Duty channel, at least I don't plan to be. It just so happens that what I was interested in playing and talking about at the moment was Call of Duty, so. But yeah, I'm gonna give a shot with Dead Rising and see what happens. All right, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Thank you. Have a good one.